and today I will be starting the basic Sanskrit class. The Sanskrit is very uh, important for everybody to learn because many of the texts, particularly the, uh, the Hindu um, and also Jains or Buddhist, most texts are all in Sanskrit. And the most important, the Sanskrit is the language of the Vedas. And uh, again, um, there are many views of like um, what Sanskrit is. Is Sanskrit a living language? Is Sanskrit uh, why Sanskrit is not spoken uh, by many uh, many? There are so many uh, reasons about Sanskrit not being spoken by many. The reason, which I think. The main reason why Sanskrit is not spoken is it was never intended to be a spoken language. That was what I think. Because the Sanskrit was what was called a Deva Bhasha. Sanskrithaha Deva Bhasha. It was the language for learning the all the Vidya or the knowledge. To gain knowledge, we needed a medium, and Sanskrit was a medium. So that the reason why they did not want it to be a spoken language is once any language, once it becomes spoken language, you can also you can see that if you see how English was spoken in the Shakespeare time or 15th century or 10th century, you go anyway or go even back to 10th century. Every 50, 100 years, if the same person was there after 200 years he's come he is able to remember what they were spoke, speaking so this was not we spoke 200 years back this english all the words everything is now changed completely changed so the language once it's spoken slang it comes into it and it came come con, con, continuously it changes <laughs> new words are added many many words are added continuously in a spoken language but our rishis, they, they wanted Sanskrit to be as it is. So they made it very structured, like a programming language. It's like a, so today we write programming languages to do computer programming. All of, we, we, we all know about programming languages. Our Rishi has already thought about the similar concept of a language. So Sanskrit is more like a programming language where the, there was there was no um, normally what gets uh, corrupted or how the meanings of the sentences we speak, how they change is because of the syntax in many spoken languages. For example, if you say Rama killed Ravana in English, now you change the, the order of the words in this particular sentence. Instead of saying Rama killed Ravana, you say Ravana killed Rama. Does the meaning change? It changes totally, absolutely it changes, right? But in Sanskrit, it doesn't change. You put the sentences or the words, you put it in any order, the meaning will exactly be the same meaning. It doesn't change at all. That is the beauty of Sanskrit. So that's why it's called Samskritaha. Samskritaha means Samyak Kritaha, done well. It was very, very planned language. They had planned it so well with all the grammar that they, because it, they, why did they uh, given so much importance to Sans Sanskrit? You can see. Why should they even give? Because the Vedas are there, and this is the store. This is language is only a medium, and this medium is the storehouse of all the knowledge contained in our Vedas, Upanishad, Puranas, all the eighteen Puranas. They are all in which language? All the languages. They are all in Sanskrit language. 
so because of being in the sanskrit language they wanted it to be a very very structured and proper language because you are you just imagine say and also the uh, mantras they are also in sanskrit so if this gets corrupted the whole energy and the power of the mantra gets corrupted you understand so that is very very important and to in order to learn vedas or shastra anything which is in the scriptures we need a um, can i um, put the, all the phones in mute yeah because i that's the question so everybody who has just put all the phones in. thank you so when the uh, because the flow goes and then uh, it's a problem for me so i i want you all of your help just uh, to focus so this, this the, um, the mantras are all in sanskrit because of that once we understand the basic language a bit even without knowing the language knowing the meaning we could still chant and do our pujas homa everything in the which are all sanskrit mantras we could still do that you cannot say that uh, i don't know the meanings so it is still fine even without knowing the meaning so i always give this one particular example of the property of a fire which burns whether you know it will burn or it, even if you don't know that it will burn it will still burn you same way the mantras will be having their efficacy even if you don't know the meaning but many of the things when we do the puja when you know the meaning and the context and also it it is all the more beautiful and then you enjoy much more when you are able to understand and the, the language and language the particular the sanskrit language is one of the most beautiful languages one of the best languages and never judge this language the greatest sanskrit language by the popularity you cannot say in this world of 7 billion only um, uh, 50000 uh, no sanskrit i'm just giving you a number maybe there are many billion or millions which is still a small number so if some language is spoken by say 5 billion people of out of the 7 billion in in itself that doesn't make that language to be the best you have to understand this just the because our rishis thought that in order that this language is preserved as it is they wanted it to be so structured and learned properly so that it doesn't get polluted and then after some time the same words for example you take any spoken language anything you can tell, you can imagine any spoken language a word which was having a connotation 1000 years back will have a totally opposite connotation today you assume a vedic text which is in sanskrit now we are all imagining now it has a different wrong opposite connotation how bad it will be how how it will hurt so with that i am going to the the purpose of saying all this is for you to understand appreciate the greatness of sanskrit language and it is very important that all of us everybody in this world i think they should start learning sanskrit only then they are they will get the benefit of the dharma or the right things because every right, right thing you do you have to there is a medium for that and all the scriptures which only say even the upanishad which i was teaching before taitri upanishad dharmam chara it says practice the righteous righteous path is what you have in your life that is what you have to satyam vada speak the truth so it gives the general principle so satyam is which language sanskrit the good thing is 
because of some of the good things in sanskrit many now know in the world the sanskrit not only the sanskrit language many use the sanskrit words for example the guru every language in even english they started using guru yeah. yoga yoga everybody everything is everybody uses the word yoga from sanskrit everybody uses the word uh, guru so there are many many things um, in in sanskrit or in english or any french any other language today which has lot of sanskrit uh, words which are used and once you we know that we are going to really enjoy so today what i am going to do um wish um i was i was we are going um, one of our um, um, ashrama um, uh, disciples and um, friends they um, shared a website um, which um, website for reading sanskrit so there are many websites and um, it's called the uh, many many websites actually if you google there are many resources available for learning sanskrit many resources so what they suggested this uh, chitrapur much uh, chitrapur mat site and uh, uh, because uh, we uh, with a great gratitude uh, i am uh, for that mat and also the all the teachers there they have done a brilliant work of trying to teach sanskrit because it's everybody's responsibility to spread and they have done a great job the i am i'm just uh, saying that i found many many million others other sites also everybody is doing but this site um, it was much easier for um, everybody to learn so you you could learn in that so i said that um, um, just as our um, previously for this class i wanted everybody to um, read the first five chapters from that uh, the, uh, yeah one to one to six chapter first one to six but anyway even if you are not read that that's fine um, i am today i am only going to give the basics so let us start with alphabets so how we have so when you learn um, sanskrit i am not going to ask you to learn in in a in a way which we, you all are expecting to right? <laughs> you are all expecting so first that is the first thing the reason is i want you to learn sanskrit as how you would have learned your mother tongue how did you learn your mother tongue can you tell me like how everybody learned a mother tongue by crawling around as a baby and listening to people talk <laughs> and Did you at the same time? Yeah, so conversation. Okay, conversations. So, so how how did they how did they listen and listen and reproduce? So, a child, when you go to when you are learning the first thing, like first language, whether whether be it your mom, mother tongue, I am saying because that could be there, your first language. That's the first thing you learn. if you go to school and uh, read um, learn using french that would be the first if you learn german or english that would be the first so whoever learns that first language how do they learn they do not somebody tells that they give a paper and pen to a child and say write ah and then they say oh read this so because you are all expecting right so i am going to say that this is how r should be written this is r should be written this way that's what you are all expecting right because that is how that you are that, yeah yes yes stereotype the learning procedure how you go to learn but your mother tongue you never learned like that so same way i am going asking everybody to learn sanskrit language the way you 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 would have learned your mother tongue just by listening to the words so i am going to do a reverse mapping i am not you are not going to say i am not going to say this is a and then you read this letter you write like this it is a then you write this is a then it is e so i that's why i don't have the blackboard because that is the traditional they will write this and say this is a oh the, if you write if 
because they are all just the symbols or figures, right? All the letters, they are all pic pictures. So if this picture denotes, ah, uh, this is the picture which will denote E, something like that. So now I'm what I'm going to say is, I'm going to give you the, first learn the sounds properly first. From the sound, I will give you the numbers. Then you will say the fifth sound you learned, you can go and from any website you take the 51 letters of Sanskrit and from that you take the fifth sound, fifth letter. Then you do a reverse process. You know that this sound is done like who? And in that, in, in your from any website or anywhere you get the letters and then, then you say that the fifth letter is actually written like that. Then you also, oh, who, which I know how to pronounce is actually written like that. So now you go and do a reverse engineering and try to learn that letter. You get this uh, subtle difference which I am saying. Not that you write, you, you, have, you have a text and then you read. You already know the sound in your mind very well. You know where the position of that sound. So, so for that, first I am going to say Sanskrit Varnaha letters. Very important to learn the 51 alphabets of the Sanskrit letters. Some of the letters here are very, um, uh, they are not in usage. But because it is a, the Vedic uh, letters, like for example, L, L, they are all Vedic. So um, there is no, um, because it's also not used in the Sanskrit language or also um, like the uh, for the uh, other uh, poems like modern Sanskrit, it's only in the Vedic Sanskrit. So there is, I cannot give you an exact, exact um, um, example of how that, that should be pronounced. I would say A ah, is pronounced like this. Right? I say A ah, is pronounced like that. So for example, I can say wall. In that wall, you say A ah, sound is coming. That is how A ah, is pronounced. But if when it comes to L or L, I get stumped because I cannot give you any example how that L or L gets pronounced. It's very unique. It's a Vedic language. But don't worry about it. It is a we are still learning that letters only because it's a Vedic letter, and then we don't want to miss that. Just because right now we don't know any usage, that, that does not mean that future we will not know or the past we, have, we might have forgotten. But it is a Vedic language. So in languages, there is something called vowels and consonants. You all know that. So um, let us now take English. So. How are the vowels placed in English? What are the vowels? Okay. okay. So are they in a group together? They are not grouped. So they are all in spread. They are spread in, in between, right? And then in between the consonants. So it's, a, it's mixed up. But Sanskrit, because it is yeah, sort of a programming language, you cannot have something like, you have to have a, proper classification so the first 16 letters of sanskrit are are vowels so first 16 so instead of five vowels you have 16 then you have 35 consonants so that is how the varna so one you, if i say it will be a ah. then the second two a ah. so there are so those will, i will i will teach you those levels so once you know, you can even give a number to that, all the 51, 1 to 51. So 1 to 61 will be, sorry, 1 to 16 is vowels, then 17 to 51 is consonants. So that's, now, so that one is very important. 1 to, you can make a note, the letters 1 to the letter 16, they are all vowels, the letter 17, to the letter 51 are all consonants. That's the first thing you are you have to write because it's important. You should you should never when I say so swaraha vyanjana vowels in Sanskrit is called swaram swaraha swaraha vowel is swaraha plural is swaraha swaraha then vyanjana vyanjanam actually vyanjanam vyanjanani. 
plural. So they are all consonants. So swaram, swaraha, and venjanam. Venjanam means consonants, and the swara is vowel. So the vowels are venjanam. Swara, swara, yeah, swara, yeah. Vowels are swaras and venjanam. Venjanami. So swara and venjana. Vowels and consonants. So now let us all I will say the swaras, the 16. Because once you know the 16, you can go back to any text, a beginner's text or any text which gives all the Sanskrit letters, 51 letters. Now you can see, oh, this is how I pronounce that first letter. And now you know from this, you can even you can count, everybody can count. You can put a number one, two, three, four from, from you you print from the any website the 16 vowels. Then you put one, two, three, four, sixteen. So now I'm going we are going to learn how to um, how we are going to pronounce those 16. Then you will know if I pronounce A. And in that in that text, it's a A is written. Then you go reverse and say, okay, so this is how I will write A. So A, that's simple. So now from that you can practice writing skills also. So once you practice the writing skill, then you come back and no, you can practice the reading skill. So from your sound, you go back to the letters. You learn how to get write the letters. And then from the letters, you try to read it and then you come back. Right? So you understand this is the difference I am going to give today. Like how the traditional learning and today's learning. Okay. So uh, let us all um, repeat. So I, I will repeat the 16 vowels as four, each four. And you can repeat two times. Uh, uh, e, e. means one mantra one matra just you have a shorter time frame for saying that which is a e, u, r, l, only five short vowels then the long vowels are a, e, u, r, l, e, I, o, au. They're all long words. Um, um, uh, they are different. Yeah. One is Visarga and Anuswara. Um is Anuswara and Visarga. So Am um and Aha uh, are different. They have it's not shorter. There are it, it, it will the shorter long of that depends on the previous vowels, which are the totally we said of five plus nine. Nine long vowels, right? Nine long. So you have to understand in Sanskrit the A, I, O, O are long vowels only. So there is no short vowel for that. Because in other many languages, you may have a short vowel for A or something. In Sanskrit, there is no A. It's only A, I, O, O only long vowels. So that is a, you have to understand because some other. Many other when we try to learn from other languages, so you are using other languages as a medium for learning Sanskrit, you will get confused. So you will have totally out of the 16, leave this two, 14, 14, 5 vowels and 5 short vowels 
nine long vowels. So all of you say once. Ah, uh, yeah. Just the vowels together. Yeah. Ah, ah, e, e, u, u, r, r, l, l, y, i, o, o, an, a. Very good. So that is it. You, you can practice later on with this. Now we will come to the consonants. So the consonants are again as a structured language very beautiful. Those lang so they are divided. First I said thirty five consonants. So out of the thirty five, the first um, first twenty five, you have to group them as fives. So you have to, it's like a this 25 we have to put like a, like a matrix with five rows and five columns you have to write like this five rows five columns which is ka kha ga gha na cha cha ja jha nya ta tha da dha na ta tha da dha na pa pha Ma. So these 25 I will explain this consonant is 25. The first one, again, as a structured language, they grouped it so well that the first line, the first row, ka kha, ga gha, na, they signify where the sound came, how the sound comes out of your mouth. So the first five are called Kantya. Kantya, Kantya. The first five are called Kantya, which is coming from your throat. So you can say that is how you know Ka, Kha, Ga, Dha, Na. You can never say these five letters. If you have a throat problem, <laughs> all others you can easily say. You will not have any problem in saying, except this. Like there are other um, others which also use the kanta. I will uh, um, like later on you you will know. But these five surely use the throat, so they are called kantya. So that is how it is grouped. That's what I wanted to say. You might say why ka ka ga ga. They are all the like kas, right? Then why the nga comes? Right? Ka kha, ka dha, na. Ta cha, ja cha, nya. So just give me this. You want something? So, if two, two letters have the same sound, there is no point in having it at all. It can be removed. So, so that's why it's uh, you. You will always, otherwise, that letter will not be there. You have to understand that the letter itself only each letter should be unique. 
then because then i can add another 50 letters and make 101 letters <laughs> with sanskrit but many letters will have so this this is i am uh, this i write in different way but i will say this is this uh, rhymes with that this will be exactly then why do we have that this not the point so have unique sounds that is very very important so the ka kha ga gha na they they have the sounds coming from kantha then cha cha ja ja nya ta tha da dha na ta tha da dha na pa pha ba bha ma so what happens is the cha use the pale pale your palate your uh, ja cha cha ja cha nya all the five then that ta tha da dha na you use a nasal sound ta tha da dha na the third use as a nasal murthi then the fourth one ta tha da dha na they use your teeth they call dantya so that is the difference when you ask about the the previous na and this na the previous na uses a nasal sound na then this one uses a teeth you have to hit the teeth to say ta if it, if 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 somebody doesn't have uh, uh, teeth they will have hard time in pronouncing only this five ta tha because your tongue your hits your teeth ta tha da tha na so that na also is a dantya so that is the difference then the pa tha ba bha ma use your lips a tha ba bha ma so you have to close your lips if you are not able to close your lips you can never say this five sounds you this why it all all the sounds emit from how they are actually <laughs> this uh, the this if you go to a higher sanskrit there it's it's still more beautiful like they will even give like uh, how much stress how where it is coming what what is the type of the letter and all that so it is there is much more in the sanskrit uh, grammar but this is a very very basic thing and uh, we are we are learning which is the last one pa tha ba bha ma is using your lips or closing your lips then the ya ra la va sha sha sa ha la cha so there will be a, again combination of varieties some coming so now we will just learn this 51 letters for you i'm we are going to i will say once and then you will repeat a a pi i u u r r l l y i o a u am a ha a a i i u u r r l l y i o a u am a ha two times a a i i u u r r r r r r r Ta 
ध ध न ध ध न ध ध न One, the first sha it is like cha in a soft so cha cha right so how you say the cha you have to with that with the with the soft sound against the sha like the shankara sha sha sa sha sha sa sha sha sa because all the three are very similar you have to be very careful Sha, 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 sha. Then ha, 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 ha. la, la, cha, cha, ha, ha, la, cha, cha. No, ha, 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 la, la, la. Yeah, this is a la. la. So this is a la. So yeah, tongue yeah, too. So this la is again a different la. Yeah. One is like uh, la, Lalita la. Then another is like la. la. ಫಸ್ಟ್ 36 consonants i will say then you can all repeat ka kha ga dha na cha cha ja ja nya ta tha da dha na ta tha da dha na pa pha ba bha ma ya ra la va sha sha sa ha la cha ka kha ga dha na familiar with this they can go back to the uh, same video which is recorded and then you can re replay this many times then you will get the exact sound how to say this words because the akshara are the they are the basic building blocks for this language why they are building blocks because they are building blocks because from these letters you are going to get words and from words you are going to get sentences so when you have to communicate meaningfully you need to communicate with sentences and for that the building blocks are first the letters from which you get to words from where you get to the sentences so that in the vowels you said l l is it l u or i l r when you say l l u is there no yeah so as i said i cannot also you don't have exact one but i'll give an example i l r so yeah they are given that i l r but um, there is no um, example for correct uh, term, term, the letter looks so, like there is r but the, yeah the letter so it, 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 there is no so it, there is yeah there is a thing like r so it is not r as it is because r will be yara la that la will have la la 
Lily, Lulu, R. So that R is different. You understand? So this vowel uh, L and L, that's why we, we don't say R. Because this is a Vedic thing, we say L. But if you ask me, is this the right R? Because I know R is not. Because R is already Lala, Lily, <coughs> that R is already there. So you cannot have the same sound again. So this is a bubble sound, a Vedic sound, which is not even in the Panini grammar. So the Sanskrit grammar, which we are learning, which is the, but why it is in this uh, Varna letters is because we want to maintain that. We want to maintain that Vedic sound, although we are, there is no usage. So that's very, you have to be very clear. There is no usage for the learn and So you don't have to spend a lot of time on that because anyway, there is no usage. Right? If there is no usage, it's it's a purely a Vedic sound. So don't worry. So from a Sanskrit language perspective, don't worry about l and l. Okay, so everybody is comfortable with the 51 letters. And for all those who are new, I would suggest that they get this. They can take any, um, they can write, you can write this in any language. But you can actually take the actual Devanagari script, which is used by Sanskrit. If somebody asks, can you use any other script? Yes, any other script. But we always want to use the original script of Sanskrit. It's called the Devanagari. Devanagari script means, why it is called? Devanagari means it's the language of the gods. So Sanskritam is always called Deva Bhasha. Bhasha means what? Bhasha. Bhasha means language. So in in Sanskrit, the, the translation for language is called Bhasha. So Sanskritam is called Deva Bhasha. Means God's language. Because why it's God's language? Because the Vedas and all the Puranas and all the Upanishads, all that, they are all in Sanskrit. So it is called the Deva Bhasha. So that is why it is given that very important, important importance for Sanskrit is because it is Deva Vasha. So first we will start today. Once we know the um, um, language, the next thing you have to understand some nuances, nuances or something which is different in Sanskrit than many other languages. Maybe very few other languages might have this. So Sanskrit has some uniqueness. But today in the beginning beginning class, I will just introduce because in later classes, we will go very deep into that. But I am going to just introduce some of the nuances. So the gender, Sanskrit has genders like masculine, feminine and neuter, neuter gender. So the masculine gender is called Pullinga. Gender in Sanskrit is called Linga. You can make a note of it. Linga. Linga means gender. And masculine means masculine is Pullinga. Feminine gender is Stri Linga. Stri means a girl. So Stri Linga means feminine. Then Napum, napum Sakalinga. Napum Sakalinga means neuter. So, all there are three genders. And you cannot, you have to know the word in a Sanskrit to know about the gender, which is different from English or many languages. Because in English, the gender is based on the form right in sanskrit is no it's the word which which will uh, which, uh, which will be the shabda or the word shabda, shabda means word in sanskrit shabda the word so the word is going to determine the gender not what the meaning of it so you have to really it's very very important here because otherwise you will get so much uh, confused because you may, you should not think, oh, this is um, this is a, a, a male thing. 
so you should be pullinga master no in sanskrit no it could be napumsa kalinga also so it doesn't matter the word is what is going to matter not the meaning of it what we normally think you might think uh, yeah say somebody says a yeah, pen pen could be uh, like i'm just saying um a pen is always with gender in english neuter right it's never a masculine or feminine but in sanskrit there could be words in uh, like for a pen like synonyms which could be in feminine gender or masculine gender any gender it doesn't matter you cannot just say oh pen i know it is you cannot do that mitra is another yeah yeah the mitra was an example so mitra a friend you will always think yeah feminine or uh, maybe a feminine i don't know like i just either associate a friend you will say this is like a your boyfriend or a girlfriend right your mask so friend could be either masculine or feminine but would they, would it be neuter but in uh, sanskrit your friend is a neuter gender so that is very important so so you have to get over that uh, thing like you have to know the shabda first to see which gender it is shabda means just the word itself the word the word how it is will determine the gender not the meaning of it and the mitra as the sun god could be a masculine gender i'm just saying but the same mitra so same thing you you can have 10 synonyms for pen which will have different different genders you could have a neuter you could have a masculine if there are many synonyms for a writing it like that writing instrument so that is you understand this concept i know it is difficult you will because we are always used to the concept of getting the meaning and say okay this one table okay i know table is neuter no you cannot take that that's the first thing you have to be careful in sanskrit that's first thing yeah so is it like hindi Gender, yeah. little bit, but not. not yeah, no, no, no. Hindi, we have Maitri. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Hindi, no. Hindi is different. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, uh, you cannot compare. Uh, the... Our question is Hindi, for example, Pustak, Kitab, can be feminized, whereas it same rule not apply to Sanskrit. Sanskrit yes. So therefore, there is a slight difference. Yeah. so um it, here it is not like um, hindi but i know there are um, even some hindi, are hindi even sanskrit. hindi might have some of the things which we we think uh, could be like a um, uh, feminine <laughs> even in chas some the similar where uh, the gender is not based on just the uh, what we think as a meaning even french has that so there are many languages in this world which do have, follow something like sanskrit where it is not based on just the meaning of it so it is always so that is so that concept i just wanted to, in the first class all of you to do know that concept first then there is another concept new concept you know and plural everybody knows right what is singular one when is so one is eka vachanam vachan means it's called singular it's one one it relates to one eka then dual means dvi vachana dvi means two 
సో ఏకవచనం ద్విపచనం దెన్ మెనీ ఇస్ కాల్డ్ బహు బహువచనం బహువచనం మీన్స్ మెనీ సో ఏక ఏక ఏకవచనం ద్వివచనం దెన్ ఏకవచనం ద్వివచనం బహువచనం విచ్ ఈస్ సింగులర్ జ్యూవల్ ప్లూరల్ సో యూ యూ ఎవ్రీబడి గాట్ దిస్ న్యూ కాన్సెప్ట్ ఓకే సో దట్ ఈస్ వన్ కాన్సెప్ట్ యూ ఆర్ టు నో దెన్ దర్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో అనదర్ కాన్సెప్ట్ కాల్డ్ ద ఫస్ట్ పర్సన్ ద సెకండ్ పర్సన్ అండ్ థర్డ్ పర్సన్ which is also in english i think right many other languages also have this first person second person but the only thing is sanskrit first person is totally changed with the english so in uh, english which is the first person i right because it's uh, it is like um, um, self centric like most languages are like why the ego centric self centric right i becomes first person sanskrit the first person is actually he they all of them they they are the first person so it is i in sanskrit is the third person we come last to i we come first to everyone the second person is you and the third person is i so there is a difference between san how we will see it doesn't matter really like which is there i'm just saying it just that it is opposite the first person is they second person is you first person third, third person, person is, is i it's so reverse order reverse order exactly it's exactly reverse order why they did it i don't know <laughs> why they put it reverse order probably they will always say the i the last like they say they you and i <laughs> we don't say i <laughs> first you say i had the last yeah, english put it in reverse order huh? english put it in reverse order yeah that was original no 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 it's not just english no other many other languages do many other languages uh, so it's not just one english one language but many languages put it in, in a different order so here so that person is very important which is they is one that is the first person second person is you and the first person is sorry third person is i so you have to that is one concept you have to learn then there is something called uh, prepositions so i was when i said that you could change the words in a sentence in any way you like without changing the without changing the meaning so how how could it be possible because why in other languages we are not able to change because yeah because of like the uh, you have a noun a verb and then um, you are you also use prepositions and other things um in your with you use with preposition right but in sanskrit they have devised a way that your subject or your noun takes different different forms based on like it is like attaching to a preposition for example so that is why what we i am introducing a new concept which is in sanskrit which is in many uh, other languages you would never have got this because all languages you have a noun and then you could just use a preposition so you can say uh, for rama with rama by rama this is rama's thing you can say from uh, i got this from rama right i am giving this to rama i am doing prayer for rama or you can use rama as like a subject you can say rama uh, the king right so you can have different but in sanskrit you have specific um, um changes how the verb rama changes itself to give that meaning total meaning 
So, for example, when you say for Rama, you will say Ramaya. The same Rama it changes to Ramaya. You say from Rama, you will say Ramat. You say this is belonging to Rama, you will say Ramasya. Right? And you are saying I am with Rama, with, right? You will say Ramena. So, just that one Rama gets different. So, it is like a proposition attached, a code or something. It is embedded in that uh, noun so that it gives different, different sets of meanings. So, now that is why we have a totally new and um, this is where, why many actually are put off with uh, like uh, language like Sanskrit because of having this Shabda. But I would say that you have to actually learn Sanskrit only because of the Shabda. That is the most beautiful thing. It's like how they have done to do this so that the syntax or, or anything like get, getting it jumbled would never change a meaning only because of the existence of what is called the Shabda. Like the noun taking the different forms is what makes language very, very beautiful and unique. So that is why Shabda is important. So noun again. So for Shabda is for nouns. So I am giving one concept for nouns. Now I am going to give another concept for verbs. So the verbs take also different. Um, the yeah, same verb it it will change based on you are referring to I like which is in Sanskrit the third person or you which is the second person or they which is the first person and it will also change based on you are referring to a singular noun or a dual noun each one uniquely so three times this matrix everywhere Sanskrit is like a matrix so matrix is eight columns Sorry, three columns and eight rows. That is called a Shabda. So you can make a note, this is very important. Three columns and eight rows will make a Shabda. So you have to write that eight. So you can write in any language, whatever right now you can use your language, what you want. So write in the Shabda. Yeah, the noun will take 28 threes or 24. 24 uh, different aspects will what make a Shabda or a noun. A noun form will now transform into 24 different aspects. You get it? One word like Rama is a noun is getting changed to 24 types. So let us learn today first before we go to the verb let us learn how that rama the word rama changes into this 24 forms so i will say once you all repeat two times so for that you have to know what that particular because the way it changes depends on whether it is masculine feminine or neuter and also it depends on how it ends that is how it is very important how it ends that word letter so let us now do akarantaha 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 so yeah so two times yeah akarantaha means a right with a akara means you can write this. Akara means ending with. Akara is akara. A. Antaha means ending with. So akara antaha means ending with a. You get it? Akara antaha. It means ending with a. Then pullingaha. Pullingaha means masculine. Pullinga means masculine. So akara antaha. Pullingaha. Rama Shabdaha. 
So the the noun Rama, the noun the sub the word shabda means word. So the word Rama is a noun. First thing you should know it is a noun. Only nouns will be having this twenty twenty four variations. That is very important. Verbs don't have verbs. The verbs only only will have nine variation variation. Are we going across or down? We are going uh, like you take one row. Yeah. Three columns. And three columns. So you will go across. Okay. okay. You will go. Yeah. You will go across. Okay. You will go across. When you write, you first write the first row. Okay. Uh, first column, second column, third column. Okay. Then you sign the second row, first column, second column, third column. Okay. Then you go to third row. So that is how you write. One, two. You, you understand how you are. So the same way you are going to say the shabda. Okay. So now the Rama shabda, Rama. So you can easily anybody can know how does that sound end? Rama. Anta means ending, right? A ah, Rama. So ma, which a, ah, right? The ma has the sound of a. Ah. You get that? How does that mind? Like which vowel uses? Ah, 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 right? Yeah. If say it is Rama, it use a. Ah. So it ends it akar antaha. Then you say antaha. Akar means that how how it ends. Anta means end. Ant is end. So here it is a uh, means akara antaha. Then it is so Rama here is a masculine. So akara antaha pullinga. Pullinga means masculine. Rama shabdaha means the word Rama has akara antaha pullinga Rama shabdaha. So now how the word Rama changes. So the first call, the first column signifies singular. You are right that first column singular uh, denotes first column denotes singular. Yeah, or eka vachanam. Eka vachanam means singular. The second column signifies vi vachanam or dual, and the third column is bagu vachanam or plural. So everybody got it. So this is easy. So now, akarantaha pullingaha Rama shabdaha means the shabda Rama, which we are going to the things for that is the shabda which is in the masculine gender and ends with a. That's what it means. Akarantaha akara means ending. Ending with a. Antaha means ending. Akara antaha means antaha ending. A, akara means a. That is how it ends. Akara antaha pullinga rama shabdaha. So now we are going to do, I am just giving one example. Like this, there are many, you have to uh, decline this shabda in, uh, for every noun, you have to have a, a separate one. Also, you for Yeah. So yeah, so uh, so akarantaha pullingaha rama shabdaha means immediately you should know I am going to give the twenty four variants of the noun rama. So the so why it is twenty four variant variants? It has three columns, eight rows. So the three columns signify what? Singular, plural, plural. So now I am going to tell you what the eight lines signify. So there is a uh, the second row. Some books you would see the second row is used for some bodhana addressing, but I am now going to use it as a eighth row. Yeah, you could because that is how uh, uh, you could do it at the end. You understand what I am saying? So the second, so don't get confused. But right now. Just take that the second row, normally the first row is the, is when the noun is used as a subject. Like when you address something, I will when you when when we give examples, you will easily understand. This is very simple. Rama is used in a sentence as a subject. So Rama kills Ravana. 
So what is the subject here? Rama. And the Ravana is the object. Right? So when Rama is used as a subject, we will say Rama. So Rama. So you will use the first row is used as a subject. So just write first row subject. Second row object. The third row by with. And the fourth row to for. Just write this only, too far. The fifth row will be from. The sixth row is just write off. Like belonging to, belonging to, off, OF. Then the seventh row, I N in, the place, like it, it's a locative, like the location, in, I N. And the eighth is the Sambodhana to address somebody or address. When you call somebody, you use it. Like Rama means, hey Ram. Hi. So that's like, that is the addressing. So that is the eighth. So now you have the eight, eight rows and three columns, right? So now we will try to fill for the Rama Shabda, the first row. Each row is yeah, each row is called a Vibhakti. Vibhakti. So the first, Prathama Vibhakti is? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, it's called Prathama Vibhakti, then Dithya, Dithya Vibhakti, Tritya. So, the first row is Prathama, one first row. I'm, I'm giving you easily, instead of using the word Vibhakti. First row is Prathama Vibhakti, second row, Dithya, third row, Tritya, fourth, Chaturthi, fifth, Panchami, sixth is Sashti Vibhakti, seventh is Saptami Vibhakti, Eight is not Ashtami Vibhakti. <laughs> it is called Sambodhana. Address, addressing Vibhakti. To address somebody, you use that <coughs> Sambodhana. Sambodhana means to address somebody. So that is the eight. So now this Vibhakti, right? Let us now fill in this, all these 24. So the far, now you are going to fill the first row, which is, now the Shabda is Rama Shabda. Rama, Rama. Ramaha. First row, first row. Yeah, so you can later on fill in. So what I will say is, you just try to listen, listen, listen. chant like three times, like a mantra chanting. Because the first thing when we learned, when I learned, when I was like seven, seven years, eight years, all at that time, time the, yeah, time, the first time there was no like explanation, all the what I, I was giving. We just have to say, then say there's a kar, antaha, puldingaha, rama, shabdaha. So, they, so we have to buy heart all yes, the shabdas the first. Class all the right. class, 50 people will all be chanting the same. Because but actually it is fun. Table, no, no, but it is it is actually fun because you learn that uh, the sound. So let us all do that now. Ramaha, Rama, 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 Four times so. So this is the first. So this is the first Now the second vibhakti. Ramam Rama Rama ne. 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 So now the third vibhakti, the third row. Ramena Rama Pyam. Ramena Rama Pyam Ramaihi. No, no, no. Ramaihi is the last. Ramaihi. Ramena Rama Pyam Ramaihi. Ramena Rama Pyam Ramaihi. Ramena Rama Pyam Ramaihi Ramena Rama Pyam Ramaihi Ramena Rama Pyam Ramaihi Rama Pyam Rame Pyaha Ramaya Rama Pyam Rame Pyaha 
Sanskrit word hey to address somebody. So hey hi is from Sanskrit. Sanskrit you address somebody will say hey. Hey Rama means hi Rama or hey Rama. Hey or hi. They, they change it to hi but it is also hey. H-E-Y. -E hey. Hey Rama means hey Rama. You address that Rama. You call somebody. You just you cannot say because you are addressing right. So it's called Sambodhanam for or addressing that Person. So, hey Rama, hey Rama, hey Rama. Now you all written, right? So now let us say the four shabda together. Akarantaha, Akarantaha, Kullinga, Rama shabda, Rama Rama, 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 Ramaya Ramabya Ramibya Ramat Ramabya Ramibya Ramasya Ramayo Ramanam Rame Ramayo Ramishu E Rama E Rama E Rama So it is fun, right? So, so that's why I like so you, huh? Huh? it's like singing yeah beautiful yeah that's why I, uh, yeah it is so uh, yeah. so every every word every noun will have this 24 variations so why we have this 24 variant variations is 
don't have to have worry about the syntax or the placing of the words so so for example um, say harati just uh, like a, a word to defeat yeah so you can say um, or um, like let, let us use a uh, um, word like uh, khadati because we all like <laughs> because it's lunch time everybody will be hungry so khadati khad means to eat right so ramaha is rama so when you say ramaha so in that you, you when i say ramaha you have to look into this you have to see where that word ramaha comes it comes in the first row does it not come in the first row yes. when it comes in the first row immediately you will know that you are going to use it as a subject so it, if it is first row first column we know it is one singular and used as subject so you have to use ramaha means immediately you know it is singular because if it was rama then you it, it could be first row as used as an um, um, the um, the subject but it could be dual right so here it is ramaha always used as subject singular so ramaha so just now for now say khadati means eating right ramaha modakam khadati right so we say it means what rama eating Modaka, which is like a good food. He is a very tasty Modaka. Ramaha Modakam Khadati. Khadati means he is eating. Ramaha. Rama is eating Modaka. So now if I say, if I say, so assume there is somebody called um, um, Modaka, who is Asura. He eats everybody. <laughs> so he say, Modakaha Ramam Khadayati. Means this this person the person Rama. So Rama is eaten by somebody called Modaka. So so now Rama now Ramam. Where is the Ram? Singular second. Yes, object. Object. So Rama it has now changed Ramam. Right? So Rama now is no, not the subject or doer. He doesn't do anything. He is the other person, Modaka, who is like Asura or the bad person. He is wanting to eat everything. So he wants to eat the Rama also. <laughs> so Modaka, Ramam. So you not say Ramaha there because there it is used as object. Ramaha. Right? Modaka, Ramam. I'm just giving a, I'm just making up <laughs> something just for you to understand. So now you want to use like um, uh, by Rama. It is done by Rama. So so you will use if it, something is done by Rama. Say Ramena. So we will say you will use Ramena when it is done something by rama when it is you have to use in your sentence where it is by you will use when you are going to do a puja you are doing for rama you will say ramaya namaha when you say ramaya for so when you say rama you will not say ramaha namaha or ramam namaha or ramena namaha because the fourth vibhakti is always used for for f o r for so when you are doing namaskaram to Rama, you will say Ramaya Namaha. When you are doing for Krishna, say Krishnaya Namaha. Why do you say that Ramaya? Because fourth vibhakti is for. Then you are getting something from Rama. From Rama, you will say Ramat. Then you are talking about some possession of Rama, you will say Ramasya. And you will say in Rama, inside Rama, somebody decides. Rama. Then 
then when you want to address rama you say hey rama so these are all singular in the first column same thing when you are seeing two ramas are all doing there are always two if there are two ramas who are doing all this then you will say ramau if it is subject ramaha ramau ramaha right object also ramam ramau so the ramau so this is a bit tricky because the drama is always also used in the in the subject as well as object in the dvivachana the same so now from the context you should know whether in that sentence this rama is used as a, the first vibhakti or the second vibhakti based on the context because some many times rama bhya also gets repeated right uh, rama rama bhya Oh, yeah, Rama Bhyam is also repeated. So we have to, from the context, you should. So once we know this shabda, so once I will give you the next class many examples, then you will easily understand. But right now I just wanted to give you the concept. So it is not just Rama as subject. Every subject, whether it is Tri Linga, Pulinga, Napum Saglinga, will have this twenty-four variations. Hmm. And the first sentence is Ramaha Mutakam Kadati. Hmm. Kadati is what? Yeah, Kadati. Kadati means to eat. And Mutakam is object. Yes. Second column is masculine or feminine. Which one? The no, 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 no. They are all, if it, all this, all sim, uh, masculine only. Oh, okay. Feminine will be totally different. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is yeah. one Rama, second column is uh, two Ramas, third column denotes many Ramas. So there, so if there are two ra Ramas will be still masculine, many Ramas also masculine. So the whole 24, they are all masculine. Yeah. So then you have same thing for feminine. So, for example, uh, you will have a. Um, I'm not going uh, next class. Later on, we will study the other shabdas like Rama, uh, like Rama, Rame, Rama, Rama, Rame, Rama, Ramaya, Rama, Bhyam, Rama, Bihi. So, you will also have the same thing. Like if it is a fruit, which is a neutral general, Palam, Palam, Palay, Palani, Palam, Palay, Palani, Palaya, Palena, Palabhyam, Palayhi, Palaya, Palabhyam, Palay, So, all of this. I'm just, uh, I didn't bear brush up because probably I, I, because I learned it when I was like seven years old at that time when you are all learning. So luckily you don't forget when you learn at that age. It's a good thing. Even after like 40 years, 50 years, you don't, uh, you have a break of like whatever years, 40 years still, you are able to get, remember, but most important for like this is you have to, Later on, try to buy heart because that is very important. But right now, you have all the um, um, uh, like uh, you you could just uh, you if, if you want to do now it's so simple uh, simpler because before I, if I wanted to know some complex uh, shabdas if I forget you want to know what is like uh, the uh, fifth vibhakti for the shabda now I go to the, you just go to Google and say that shabda it gives all the twenty four variations quite immediately. The, Class and ask the teacher. Yeah, I'm just saying now you you just get immediately. Hmm? Yeah, you get immediately all the shabdas, all everything is in the available because previously we used to carry a book called Shabda Manjari. Yeah, yeah. and uh, also the publications are very less. We use like uh, what's called RS Vadya and, <laughs> and uh, like from um, uh, Palgat. Like they had, there was a publication which we all used. And also the Chittur books, uh, yeah, the Chittur. So very few at those times. But right now there are, there are so learning resources are many. So we could learn very very quickly, very fast, and very easily. So Rama, like you, you know how it is changed. Now before we finish today's class, yeah. So before we finish uh, today's class, I am going to bring another concept of the verb. Just like the noun has 24, verb is good. It has only nine, three rows, three columns, right? Well, 
three rows, three columns. The first row is the first person in Sanskrit, which is like in English will be third person. So first row is the first person in Sanskrit. Yeah, Prathama. Then the second row is second person. It doesn't change in English or Sanskrit. And the third is a third person, which is I. But in other languages, it could be the third person. But here, the third person in Sanskrit verb is I. So they is the he is the first person. You is the second person. I is the third person. So the first person is in the first row. Second person is the second row. Third person in the third row. So now let us use a verb because we are also le learning called a put. Pa it put. Put is the verb. So let us use the word put. P A T H. Like I don't know. The second ta, like a hard ta. Yeah, P A T T. How do, however you want to write. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a. Uh, yeah, put means to read. Put means to read. So the way put changes in the nine forms. That is write the first row now. Patati. Patanti. Patati. Patataha Patanti Patati Patati Patataha Patanti in the first row. You write it Patanti. Yeah, Patanti. You just focus on the sound Patati Patataha Patanti, which is the first row. This is the first person in Sanskrit. Now the second person, second row. Patasi, Patataha, Patataha, the second ta here, the hard ta. Patasi, Patataha, Patata, again the second ta. Right? Patasi, Patataha, the second ta, that is more important. Then Patata, the second ta again. Yeah, it is a bit hard. Patasi, patataha, patata. Then the third row is patami, patami, patavaha, patamaha. Patami. No, no, patami, patami, patavaha, patamaha. The third row is. Third row is Patami. Me. Patami. Patavaha. Patamaha. So you got it, right? So here, when you say the first Patati, it's, it is again in the right in the column. First column, you write singular. First column is singular. Second column is dual. The third column is plural. So do you have a matrix of three by three? Nine. You have it, right? Three by three. Three rows, three columns. The first column signifies singular. Just like Shabda. Second column, same thing. Second column, dual. Third column, plural. And the first row? Yeah, yeah. They, right? Exactly. Second is you. And the third is I. Right? So... Now we say Ramaha Modakam or Ramaha Pustakam. Ramaha Pustakam is again you Pustakam is used as an object here. Ramaha Pustakam Patati. Use Patati. Why you use Patati? Because it's a third, is it there? Here it is the first person. In English, you that's a third person, right? So that you use because Ramaha one Rama. Ramaha Pustakam Patati. Then so if they are all like uh, one book is there, 
and uh, there are five multiple. multiple ramas or two ramas are actually reading this that book then you'll say rama 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 you'll go back to the previous oh. the dual will be rama rama pustakam pathataha pathati pathati no no pathati yeah pathataha pathanti right so rama pustakam pathataha so they are using the same one book only they are all now five five ramas are peeping and going through the same book five ramas now you say rama ha rama rama ha sama ha pustakam pathanti so if it is singular in the noun you also have to use singular in the verb dual in a noun you have to use the dual form in the verb plural in a noun you have to use the plural form in the verb so now rama ha you say pathati patata patanti because there is a first person now when you are saying for example twam twam is you right so when you use twam you have to use the second person now so twam pustakam what will you say pathasi yeah yeah twam pustakam yeah twam pustakam patha si why you use patha si the singular second second yeah singular and second person patha si then uh, like uh, the same tom um, um, tom sh the shabdam for you say first is tom then the next line is you want you want you am so right now you just don't have to it's a difficult shabda it's called yushma shabda but just now so it is you am right so if it is two people i am saying two people to read the book you'll say you want pustakam patha patha tha because dual second the second person in the middle column then i am asking all of you to read that book i will say you yam pustakam patha tha yeah so second one is patha tha tha third is patha tha so it changes the subtle change patataha means dual patatha is plural so now i am reading right aham pustakam patami singular then we both are reading then we will be avam pustakam patavaha all of us are reading it will be vayam pustakam patamaha the third person is i yes okay you just yeah you just exactly my opposite yeah. yeah so so that is how you just link so with next class we will give more examples so i introduce you today to the shabda and this so the way we will say pathati pathataha pathanti pathasi pathataha pathatha patami patavaha patava same thing if you for eating you we'll say khadati khadataha khadanti khadasi khadataha khadata khadami khadava khadamaha you are, you can have many words right then you will say um 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 bhavati um, running bhavati thavataha dhavanti Thavasi, Thavataha, Thavata, Thavami, Thavavaha, Thavamaha. So, the way we learn is we just learn the last of. That's how we learn. We say C, C, T, no, no, T, Thaha, Anti, C, Thaha, Tha, Mi, Baha, Maha. That's how we just write the last, and then you just. Uh, the suffix then you any verb you just put it in here like not anywhere like i will like there are like um, you have to see whether which uh, whether it is uh, in the um, um, parasmepada atmanepada and all that 
that, that is as, active voice verbs change based on how they are they are going to be used as active voice or passive voice or um, based on mm-hmm. present tense, past tense. There are ten tenses. Uh, it's not just present, past, future. There are actually ten in the Sanskrit. So all the, and then also active and passive. So the combination becomes twenty totally. So there are twenty different types of this verb will take twenty different forms. <laughs> So that is a, uh, but yeah, don't get overwhelmed with that. It's not that hard that because most likely we'll just go into this simple and later on you can learn. So with this, we will finish this class and then we will continue in class uh, next week. Shri Guru Bhiyo Namah.